Hi, hello. So I want to try and set up the problems uh, from our problem set just like we would normally do in class. And so here we go for our first problem in chapter 9. So the need arises in the laboratory for 2,000 centimeters cubed of antifreeze solution consisting of 30% methanol in water, 30% uh, by moles. What volumes of pure methanol and of pure water at 25 degrees C must be mixed to form the 2,000 centimeters cubed of antifreeze also at 25 degrees C? partial molar volumes of methanol and water in a 30 mole percent methanol solution and their pure species volume molar volumes both at 25 degrees C uh, are provided below. So all the data is at 25 degrees C. The partial molar volumes are at the same uh, concentration um, as our final mixture. So they don't mention anything explicitly about pressure um, but we can assume it's all say atmospheric pressure. right? It's a, a incompressible liquid that's you know, say open to the atmosphere. So if you just try and take inventory at first of, of what we have in the problem statement, all right, so uh, need arise in the laboratory for 2,000 centimeters cubed of antifreeze solution. So that's going to be essentially V total of our mixture. Okay, then looking at the mixture, if I let methanol be uh, component one, all right, X1 would be 0.3, where, well, essentially, if I just jot all over the place, we'll say that methanol. Ah, methanol is our component one, and water will be our component two. Okay, so X1 is, is 0.3, right? We have 0.3 uh, mole frax methanol. And what we want to solve for is uh, V1 total and V2 total. Okay, the two, the total volumes of those two beakers need to be mixed to form our final mixture. Okay, got it. All right, so uh, just thinking about what we just derived in terms of our partial molar properties. Okay, so remember, you know, partial molar volumes are essentially the effective uh, volume occupied uh, per mole of species one and two um, in that mixture, right? Because in our mixture, we have to account for cross interactions. So our partial molar volume is going to be you know, different than our pure component molar volume. Okay, and if I look at this case, uh, pure component. Uh, partial molar volume is going to be less than my pure component molar volume. So on average, uh, those molecules are going to be closer together uh, in my mixture than they are in you know, pure, pure self. Okay, and same thing with water, right? It's an associating system, so it makes sense, right? There's going to be hydrogen bonding uh, going on between methanol and water, um, and so it seems reasonable. All right, so thinking back to uh, our discussion of partial molar properties, so in terms of V, Okay, first thing I remember is that V, the molar volume of my mixture, can be written as the molar average of my partial molar volumes. Okay, or in this case, it would be X1 V1 plus X2 V2, okay, which is 1 minus X1 V2. Okay. Doom. Okay. Alright, now I want X tensive V. Okay. So X tensive V, so V total, okay, which is what we're given, is equal to n times V, okay, and that'll be then uh, n x1 V bar 1 plus n times 1 minus x1 V bar 2. Okay, so if we look at this equation, we know V total, uh, we know V bar 1, we know V bar 2, I know x1, I know 1 minus x1, okay? So only unknown that I have is n, okay? Total number of moles, okay? So if I write this out then, we're going to solve for n. So v total is n times x1 v bar 1 plus x, well, 1 minus x1. v bar 2, okay? So solving for n. I would have that n is equal to x1 v bar 1 plus 1 minus x1 v bar 2 all over uh, v total. Hold on, did I flip things around? Oh, I, no, divided, I, I did flip things around. <laughs> it's v total over that. Okay, sorry, I've got the Got it upside down, the units would have worked out. So n is v total divided by 
x1 v bar 1 plus 1 minus x1 v bar 2. Okay, and that would be equivalent to v total over you know, v, the molar volume of my mixture. Okay, so cool. So starting from here, right, we find that now we can calculate n. Right, I know v total, I know my mole fractions, and I know my partial molar volumes. Okay, but what the question wants to know is what volumes of methanol and ethanol would I need to mix together to form that mixture? Well, if I know n, the total number of moles, right, in that system, do I know the number of moles of methanol uh, and of water? Well, I do, right? I do because remember, you know, x1, okay, is just n1 over n, right, where I'm mixing a beaker of pure component 1 and pure component 2 together to form form this mixture. All right, so if I want to know the number of moles of methanol, uh, well, it's just N1 is X1 times N, and equivalently, N2 would be 1 minus X1 times N, okay, or I could write it as just uh, N minus N1. Okay, cool. So, we'd probably do this, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it's all the same. Okay? And then once I have N, if I wanted to know V1 total, what's the total volume of that beaker of methanol that I needed to mix? Well, shouldn't it just be V1 or N1 times V1? And shouldn't V2 total just be N2 times V2? Yeah. All right. So the key is, is we're dealing with partial molar quantities. So things like our partial molar volume. Okay. Partial molar volume is the effective value in solution. Okay. So we expect the effective value, or my partial molar property, to be different than that pure molar value. So uh, if taking a beaker of pure uh, methanol and pure water, mixing them together to form a mixture, right, the partial molar properties of each species in that final mixture is going to be different than um, those uh, corresponding pure component properties. All right, I have to account for cross interactions. Um, but essentially, you know, the key is, is that the number of moles is constant. Okay, and so if I calculate, say, the moles of each species in that final mixture, that must be the moles of each species that I need to mix together. And once I know the moles of each species in their pure component state, I can calculate the volumes of those pure beakers that I need to, to mix. Okay, great.